Hello world, I am kicking off a new series this time around and it's going to be called Foundation Fest and we are going to check out the Two-Faced Born This Way Foundation in episode one. <laughs> Shelly here and today I'm going to kick off a new series called Foundation Fest. This is absolutely inspired by Thetela's 15 Days of Foundation. She is uber, uber committed to foundation reviews 15 days in a row. Holy cow. So I'm not, not at that level. I'm going to start out Foundation Fest as a five-day series that I will pop up I don't know, every couple months, maybe so. Now, one thing I really like about following the 15 Days of Foundation series on the Taylor's channel, which I will link below and you should definitely check out, is that she has specific issues with her skin and she is constantly looking to find the best foundations that work for those issues. One thing she's got that I share in common with her is pale skin. Another thing I share in common with her is the fact that I often have my foundations settling into fine lines around my mouth and on my forehead. Now she's got cystic acne and things to cover up and so she's usually going for a full coverage foundation. Now I don't have that much to cover up. Medium coverage to high end of medium usually does me just fine. I've got some sunspots, dark spots on my face and some redness that I do like to cover up. I have large pores. She has issues with pores. So there are some commonalities there. So what I'm going to do with Foundation Fest is essentially review foundations with my specific issues in mind, which some of you may share. Now the things that are specific to my skin, I have very dry skin. It is dry year round. I do not have oily skin. I, I, my skin flakes off, like it gets that dry, especially in the winter time. So I have issues with dry patches and foundation clinging to my dry patches. I have dry skin. If a foundation is overly drying, it will feel very itchy to me by the end of the day and I just want to rip it off my face. So that's one thing that I deal with. Another is fine lines. I'm 42 years old. I'm getting fine lines under my eyes and around my eyes and on my forehead and around my mouth. And when foundation settles into those lines, it just looks gross and it makes those lines look worse than they actually are. So I'm looking for foundations that do not settle into dry lines. Dry lines, well, I guess they are dry, fine lines. I'm also dealing with enlarged pores, especially on my nose and around my cheeks. And when foundation settles into those, I can't stand polka dot nose. I can't stand being able to see the texture of my skin. My skin is getting more textured. So those are the things that I am dealing with that I'm trying to find foundations that make those things go away or at least appear that they went away. So first up, I'm going to try the Too Faced Born This Way foundation. Now this is in the shade Snow. I have done a wear test and first impressions on this foundation in the shade Porcelain, which is a little bit darker. That is now too dark for my skin. So I decided to switch over to Snow and give it a little more thorough of a test. Now I'm going to be trying this set of foundations with primer. I'm going to use the It Cosmetics. This is their Serum Collagen Veil Anti-Aging Primer. Essentially this primer is supposed to smooth fine lines and pores while delivering hydration and a bunch of anti-aging benefits. So in my experience with this primer, it doesn't necessarily extend the wear of foundations, but it does make them sit more nicely on the face. So I'm going to use this primer for this particular series of foundations in my foundation fest. Now let's talk about this foundation in particular. So on the Too Faced website, this is described as an oil-free foundation that masterfully diffuses the line between makeup and skin. For coverage so undetectable, you can't see the makeup and you can't see the imperfections. All that's left is naturally radiant skin that looks like you were born this way. That is big time claims in terms of what this stuff is going to look like. Uh, <laughs> I think it sounds wonderful. Now, this retails for $39 and... 
Let's confirm here. You do get one fluid ounce of product in this bottle. It's a nice glass sturdy bottle. It does come with a pump, so it's nice and sanitary. It looks nice. It's, it looks nice sitting on the vanity. So it claims to have medium to full buildable coverage. So that's what we're working with going into this. I am going to show you guys how I apply this foundation. We'll do a wear test. I'll check in throughout the day and we will see how it does all the way till the end of the evening. So let's get started. I have washed, moisturized, and primed my face. Also wearing sunscreen, sunscreen people. This is the It Cosmetics number 50 Collagen Veil Seri Serium, Serium, Serious Serum anti-aging primer it's a hydrating primer has lots of really good ingredients in it i will use that for this duration of foundation fest and of course the born this way foundation in snow so here is what we are working with today i am going to use a damp real techniques sponge on one side of my face the Kat Von D Lock It Edge foundation brush on the other side, and we'll see if there is a preference. So I'm gonna start with two pumps. I have a little bit of experience with this foundation because I do have a, another shade of it, but that got a little too dark for me now that I have no skin color and it's winter time again. So I'm gonna start out with the Real Techniques sponge. I'm just gonna dip it in here and go to town. This foundation always feels very nice going on. It's a very creamy consistency. It's not, doesn't feel drying. It actually feels pretty hydrating. It blends really easily. It's a it's always, I've always thought it's a nice foundation to work with, at least upon application. I would say it's a light to medium coverage. I can still see some of my sunspots coming through, but it's definitely evening out my skin tone a bit. Let's do the brush side. Looks like I'm getting a little bit better coverage with the brush right off the bat, but that's usually true for me. I don't know why. The sponges tend to sheer out the coverage for me. My problem with brushes is I always have trouble with seeing the brush texture on my skin. I am definitely preferring the side with the sponge, so I am going to get what's left and go with the sponge. I just think for this particular foundation it seems that the brush is definitely leaving a lot of texture. Now with that particular brush I do not have the problem of it leaving texture in all of my foundations. so. It does seem to be a foundation specific issue. From a distance I feel like this foundation looks really nice. When I get up close it is settling into some of the fine lines, my smile lines. It's start starting to already settle into the lines in my forehead here. So I'm just going to try to blend these out and hope that it stops settling in there. It's not really doing any favors for my pores or texture. My pores have actually been looking quite nice and rather smaller lately, so the fact that this seems to be accentuating them is a little bit disappointing. Let me zoom you guys in and let you see this up close. It's a little cakey around my nose.
This claims to be medium to full buildable coverage. I would say with one coat, we got almost medium coverage. I can still see more of my sunspots than I would like. I can still see my freckles on my nose and those are usually pretty easy to cover up. There's a little bit of redness on the bridge of my nose and around my nose that is still coming through. And typically I would say a good medium coverage for me is covering all of my redness, most of my freckles and most of my sunspots. And I would say I can still see a bit of all of that. So I'd say it's almost medium. We're gonna go with one coat for today. I'm gonna go put the rest of my makeup on and I will be right back. I changed my mind. I would like to see if this is buildable. I'm gonna go in with one more pump and use the Real Technique sponge and see if we can build up this coverage just a little bit. It's supposed to be buildable all the way to full coverage, so. My fear is that because it's sort of already accentuating texture that it will just accentuate texture way too much. It's better. We are not at full coverage, but the prominence of my sunspots has definitely decreased. And I think some of the redness, I still can kind of see a little bit of redness around my nose, but for the most part, Yes, I would say this is buildable. The finish actually looks a little bit better on the second coat than it did. Trying to keep it from settling into my lines. Now I'm gonna go put the rest of my makeup on and I'll be right back. I'm back, face is on. All of my products blended just fine over this foundation. I did set it with a powder. I used the Physician's Formula Youthful Wear Translucent Setting Powder. The foundation is definitely still settling into my lines. It's a little worse around my mouth than my forehead, but it's definitely settling into lines. I had, throughout the entire application process, I had been patting it out to try to get it to stop settling into lines. I will give it one more pat. That's actually making it look worse. So I think I'm stuck with it settling into my lines. I'm gonna give this a few hours. I will check back in a little while and we will see how it is holding up. I It has not improved since I applied it really. The texture on my skin and my pores are kind of looking a little bit obvious. So we'll see how this goes. I will check back in a little bit. Wanna get you guys a check-in in natural light. Foundation's only been on for about two hours now, but the natural light is fading fast. So I wanted to get this while we still had some daylight. It looks like a good match for my skin tone. Um, overall, you can see my neck. I did not blend it very far down my neck, so the downside of this is that you can always see the redness in my neck, but the foundation then covers up the redness in my face. So that's always kind of a bummer, but here you go, natural light. Here we are, we are approaching the nine hour mark. And let's see how this foundation is holding up. Now, at conversational distance, I would say it looks decent for nine hours. It, the color has oxidized just a little bit. It's gonna be hard to tell because my skin is always so red, but it's a little more orange than it started out this morning. So it has gotten a little darker and a little bit more orange than when we started, but it doesn't look terrible. At conversational distance, I would say it looks okay. I would I would be okay being in public like this. When you get closer up, the problems that it started out with are still there. So it definitely gathers in fine lines. So the lines under my chin are 
full of cake foundation, my smile lines, the lines of my forehead, it, it settles into fine lines. I couldn't find any way to stop that from happening. It is looking heavy and starting to break down just a little bit around my nose, a little bit on my chin. It's looking heavy in the center of my face, but not yet breaking down, but it is looking a lot more textured than it did when we started out. My pores on my cheeks don't look any worse than they did when we started, but they're still clearly visible. So the claims that this foundation both hides imperfections and looks indetectable and looks just like skin, I would say that's definitely not really the case. One thing that I did notice, the the fact that it settles into my lines, the one place where it really didn't settle into my fine lines is under my eyes. You can see some of my under eye lines at this point in the night because I have very dry skin and by the end of the night, almost anything, I, I, I can't really keep my under eyes hydrated. They dry out by the end of the day. But the foundation is not at all settling into those lines. And I wonder if it's because I had immediately set my concealer and my under eye area with setting powder where I did set my face, but it was kind of after I did some other makeup and things. So I wonder if setting the foundation a little bit sooner would prevent some of these settling into fine lines. Some of the other reviews that I've seen of this foundation had the same complaint that it settles into lines, but I wonder if that might be one way to sort of reduce that sort of settling from happening. Overall, I would say uh, pretty decent for an everyday use kind of foundation. This is not going to make my holy grail list, unfortunately. I do like the foundation as a as a general everyday kind of a thing. I will say that my skin does not feel dry, which to be wearing foundation all day and have no sort of drying effect, I don't feel itchy, I don't feel scaly or dry. That's a that's a plus to me and that's part of why I I like this foundation. I don't love what it looks like at the end of the night. I don't hate what it looks like, but it is comfortable it does not irritate my skin, it does not get itchy, it does not dry my dry me out, and with my skin as dry as it is, I think that is important to me. Now I do have, I would say I'm a little more dewy than I was this morning. Um, I don't really have much oil ever, so that's however that came to be, that came to be. Uh, but let me zoom you guys in and give you one good look here. There you have it, nine hours with the Too Faced Born This Way foundation in the shade Snow. Happy kickoff to Foundation Fest. I hope you found this useful. Let me know what foundations you would like to see me try down in the comments below, and I will try to get my hands on those and check them out for another Foundation Fest video. Tune in tomorrow for the next one. Take care of each other. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.